All right, well, thank you so much, you guys. It's been fun and the dance hype was great. Stevie is on my 2024 playlist. Uh, and I think that's a free tip that I wasn't planning on giving you, but if you don't have a 2024 playlist, it's kind of good. Feel good playlist, that's something we all need. Um, there's so many things that I would like to talk about as a businesswoman, as someone who has lots of skin in the game, uh, and somebody who has just uh, taken the risks and had some payoff. One of the things is this book. So if you are interested, you find something curious about who I am, easiest way to find me, Soldier in Psychology, or if you just look up Tara, Psychologist Edmonton, you'll probably find me. Instagram, Tara Boothby, those sorts of things. Love and Love's Energy. Um, I'm not gonna go all over with this book, but uh, one of the things that I think of, um, and um, oh, I might cry and that's okay, just because I'm a feeling person is something I've discovered over the years. But a dear friend of mine who actually wrote a letter in this, his name is William Paul Young, he wrote The Shack. He's kind of a crazy, controversial guy. And he went to speak at an engagement in Florida and there was all these people rallying outside and they were just picketing and picketing. And Paul was like, what are these guys doing? It's Florida, it's the you know dead of summer, whatever, super hot. So he's like, these poor people, I'm gonna bring them water. He goes out, he's giving out water bottles, everybody's parched, they're like, thank you, thank you. He says, what are you picketing anyhow? And they're like, have you heard of this guy, William Paul Young? He wrote The Shack, he's here. And then, long story short, they find out he's Paul, they start talking with him. Paul is all love, he's all goodness. He doesn't have to be, he's the real deal. When I grow up, I wanna be Paul, you know? Somebody who is just all love. Think about women in business, and it's a hard racket. I don't always know if we get along well. I mean, that's some of my experience. I haven't always been kind to my peers. I have unfortunately felt that my peers were unkind to me. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm f headlong into the theory of attachment. That's my business. I'm a theorist. I'm not really the how-to person. Sometimes I get in trouble, people are like, give us tips and tricks. I'm like, well, I just, I'm kinda into the energy, the, the Stevie Nicks dance thing, that really worked for me. It's like, I get this. That was nice hype. That was like, lovely surprise, a happenstance, something that was good for me. We didn't know that was gonna happen. I adored that, because I felt the energy lifting in a beautiful way. Um, so I wanted to talk about a chapter in the book that I think is significant in my journey as being a woman in business. The title is, You Get to Choose Who You Are in All of Your Relationships. So we get to choose who we are in all of our relationships. This is sort of a go-to line that I have with people. We have a If I don't like who I am in this relationship, I have a choice. Um, so you get to choose who you are in all of your relationships. The other really big thing is we have been choosing. So we're not powerless as we notice. I don't really get this vibe. It's not quite working for me. But who am I and what are the choices that I've been making? It, it's not about blaming ourselves or blaming others, but it is this power of choice. And if I don't like who I am, I can have a corrective epiphany because I get to like myself in all my relationships. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to a page here and read a little bit. Um, if I can, because the over 40 crowd, these are my prescription. Sometimes I can and sometimes I can't. Uh, so no matter what your story is, no matter your past, no matter your current circumstances, you get to choose who you are in all of your relationships, regardless of your relationships family, friends, business, there's choice. The flip side is also true. You have been deciding who you are. We all are always deciding who we are, though we rarely pay attention to these decisions. The good news is that at this very moment, we can start to pay attention. At times, life is unkind to us. For some, life is very, very unkind. So there's, there are hardships. I, I know the hardships that I've 
faced, but pain is subjective. And there are people who have gone through really, really terrible things, people in this room, and that does make the choice harder. So I think that equity is always important when we're looking at choice. Some ways my choices are easier than the person standing next to me because the box I'm standing on is taller. And it's not just a one size fits all. You know, look at all these women in this room. You guys hustle, you don't hustle. You're here to think about yourselves and think about the other people around you. Why are we doing this? Because we want to try and figure out what equity is. We want a better choice. That's my choice. Nobody else gets to prescribe that choice for me. I really liked what Anita was talking about. I don't know where she went with somatic. Somatic is awesome because choice is really knit into that self-regulation. And the more self-regulated I am, the more I can be empowered to decide. Uh, let me see. Oh, the ad lib. What do you want to say? Um, so I'm going to skip to this point here. Um, there's, there's places in our relationship where it's hard. I think in business, as a woman in business, what's hard is when uh, contracts haven't gone well or collegially things haven't gone well. I, I have discovered social justice. I believe in nonviolence. And that has transformed a lot of how I move in and out of relationships. But before that, when things went bad, I could be sour because it's business and you be business minded. That's what we're told. However, we're people. So if I believe in love and I believe is always inclusive or is not love, that can change how I navigate the difficult decisions. We don't have to stay stuck in relationships that don't work for us, but we can choose how to move out of relationships in a way that serves us with love. And we are all included. So there's people that, you know, um, I, I'm out of relationship with. There's family members that I'm out of relationship with. And there are colleagues, unfortunately, that we don't vibe. And it's sad because being out of relationship is always unnatural. And if, if I think for me, what I've realized is I've, I've been running a private practice agency in a women dominated industry for almost 20 years. Um, it hurts. It hurts to not always get it right for other people. It hurts to feel in the spotlight and it hurts to worry that people don't know our heart. But your heart is your heart. Your heart is your heart. My heart is my heart. And I think, again, with the somatic thing, I have mad respect for somatic therapists. That was my next ambition, but I just fell in love with attachment science, so I didn't move on. Is that in our heart and how we really connect in, self-love is me connecting here. We are whole people. We are whole people. We are wholly loved. We are flawed and fabulous. You are and I am. And your flaws are not what everybody else sees. I need to remind myself of that daily. I think that there's like this gaping hole in my back where people can look inside and see how fucked up I am. I'm just as fucked up as everybody else. You know what? And I'm still loved. So you get to choose who you are in your relationships. We have been choosing. If we're unhappy, let's choose differently. And also to just notice, it's not about a cliche thing that sounds nice. It's a meditative, sub, uh, subliminal shift. If I can write this message on my heart and I can meditate on it, then that's something that can start to transform who I am on the inside for me. Put the oxygen mask on ourselves first, right? Um, so I think, I mean, I said a lot of things. I do have like almost 300 more pages, so I'm just saying I could say more, but I think that's pretty good. And I thank you guys for coming and the good energy and the, you know, the other speakers. It's amazing to just participate and see how um, things come together. Things come together. We didn't plan anything about what people were going to say. And you can see it's like there's belief in women. There's belief in the identity of people. And it all works together for good. Okay, guys, so have a fabulous time.